Okay, parents, I'm talking to you. Now, I know firsthand how difficult it can be to keep your little ones safe when they're surfing online. I mean, most of the time, as parents, we really don't know where they're going online and if any of those websites are deemed safe. However, today we're gonna to talk about a product by Synology that can help with this problem. So Synology makes a router that has an app included on the router and the app is 100% free. So what we're talking about here has no monthly fees. Now this app is called Safe Access and Safe Access can be set up and configured in a lot of different ways to help keep your children safe when they're online and make sure they're not going to places they're not supposed to. And today we're gonna to take a little deep dive into that Safe Access app and show you what it can do well and what it can. Hey guys, Tim Tritch here with Ethernet Blueprint. Now, I know there are a lot of devices out there that parents can buy in order to help make their network safer for their children. However, I think in most cases, maybe not all, but in most cases, those devices will typically come with some sort of a monthly subscription or a monthly payment fee type deal in order to take advantage of all the features. Now, I'm not here to tell you not to buy those devices. I'm sure they work just as they are designed. However, I did want to offer you another option from the guys over at Synology who have built a lot of those safety features into their router system and made it 100% free to use. Now, the router we're gonna be using today is the Synology WRX560, which is gonna run you about $220 on Amazon. Just know though, before we even get started, that the Safe Access app that we're gonna be taking a dive into today will work on any of the Synology routers that they sell, the older ones and the newer ones. So it doesn't matter which router you buy, this is included, you do not have to buy this specific model. The other thing I wanna say, just in general, this device does come with a lot of great features outside of this parenting restriction child safety app we're gonna be talking about. Now, one of them is, is that these can be meshed together. So if you have a larger home and you're worried about coverage, you can actually buy multiple of these devices and mesh them together to expand the coverage in your home, which is really great if you don't have the wires pulled. Um, it also has the ability to do VLAN. So if you have a lot of smart home devices or IoT-like devices in your home and you'd like to add a layer of security to isolate them so you don't have to worry about your network being compromised, that is also built into here and we will look at that in a separate video. So I wanted to just point out that these things really do pack a punch in addition to the great features we're gonna be talking about today. Now, I am gonna be setting this thing up from start to finish. I'm going to go through the setup process very quickly and not really take a deep dive. I want today's video to focus on the parenting aspect of it so you guys can see if this is gonna be a good option for you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, in order to do this, you guys are gonna to need to have the DS router app and your router will need to be plugged in and connected to the internet. So we'll choose the DS router app to get started and we're going to set up a new router. Now it's telling us we need to go over into the Wi-Fi on our phone and choose the Wi-Fi network broadcasting the Synology name. So let's go ahead and do that. Once connected, there is no password. You can go back to the app and continue the setup by choosing start. This is where you're gonna enter your admin credentials. This is to log into the router and manage it. So choose something that's secure and works for you. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set up our first Wi-Fi network. So you can choose what the name of your Wi-Fi network is gonna be and a password for it. And then when this gets set up, that will be the Wi-Fi network that is broadcasting from your router system. All right, so we're gonna choose router mode and you can check the allow external access, which we'll get into in a later video. I'm checking it here. All right, we're gonna leave this to automatic, choose agree, and it is gonna go ahead and apply the router system or the settings to our router. All right, now it's asking us, do we want to join or connect to the new Wi-Fi network that we created? So we say yes. All right, so it's gonna verify connectivity. If there's updates it needs, it might do that during this process here. Mine didn't need it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this part here, the manager Synology Anywhere, we can do that later. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and say start managing. And there you have it. Now the router is online and we can log into this thing on a computer and start our process. 
All right, guys, so I'm going to be doing this setup on my laptop. The app, you can do a lot of this stuff on there. I don't know the exact differences, but I do know the app can be a little bit more limited. So I'd recommend getting this set up on the main computer here. Um, and that's simply done by going to the default uh, web address, which is the 192.168.1.1 and logging in. You'll be prompted with a login screen and you'll just use the credentials that you used when we set it up a little bit ago in the previous steps. All right, so when it comes in, when you log into this thing for the first time, it's gonna give you this little tour and it's gonna walk through the little apps that are pre-installed. You can go ahead and next through that. That's not showing up on mine because I've already been in here. Now, one thing I'm gonna talk about today is there are two different ways you can set up this restrictive access. The Safe Access app is already gonna be installed in your device. You do not need to install it or do anything. You just need to click on it and walk through the steps we're talking about. Now, one thing I will point out, and it's, it's gonna become important, is that you're gonna to wanna to name your devices. So that's the first thing I wanna talk about. So in order to name devices, you're gonna come over into the network center here, okay? I'll blow this up. And then you're gonna to go to traffic control, okay? And these are all devices that are connected to your network. Now you can see I have one named Tim's iPhone. If I hit edit, I can change the name of that, I can change its icon, I can do a couple different things there. But the good thing about changing this is when I get an alert from Tim's iPhone or I'm setting up restrictions on Tim's iPhone, you're gonna to wanna to know that that's that device. Because by default, a lot of times it'll just say Apple or generic device or Android or you know, Xbox might say Microsoft something because it's just trying to pull that information the best it can, but it doesn't always do a great job. So if you're setting restrictions on your kids' devices, you're gonna to wanna to get those devices in your hand and look up the IP address on them so you can rename them in the system. And this is the IP address that I'm talking about right here. So you can turn on the Xbox and figure out the network, what IP address it grabbed, and then you can go in and name that in Sun's Xbox. And that way, when we set up rules, you can add Sun's Xbox into that rule and it'll allow um, things to be restricted. However, this is less important if you do a network profile, which we'll talk about, because anything that connects to that Wi-Fi network is gonna be protected. And so, um, um, so it's a little different, but it's nice when you get alerts too. You know, the alerting is gonna come at you and say, hey, so-and-so is trying to get to a bad site. Okay, well, if you didn't name that device, then it's a little tricky, right? So um, I recommend naming your devices. Do the best you can. This is an extra step, but it will make this process much easier in the long run. So I'll go ahead and X out of that. And we're gonna go ahead and click into safe access now. I'm gonna move this over here because I'm gonna do a little picture in picture here. Um, That bigger okay so when you open it up it's basically blank there's nothing in here and you're gonna see everything security wise is gonna be done using profiles but there is a lot of other information in here um, and other things you can do for example if you had any on this overview page it's gonna tell you if there was any dangerous attempts on your network um, inappropriate attempts based off rules you have set up we don't have any so there's no data in here. And it's, it's also going to tell you some devices of how long things have spent online in the last 24 hours. So when your children say, well, I wasn't on my device, be like, well, I know you might not have been on it, but and actively using it, but your device has been online. So this is also going to kind of force the kids to shut things down when they're not using them and stuff like that to help with arguments. Um, everything we're going to do today is going to be using a profile though, like I mentioned. And so we're going to go ahead and set that up here. All right. So when we click in there, it is going to open a sort of wizard to follow to kind of make this process a little bit easier. And we'll go through that process. We are gonna set up both types of profiles. So we'll go ahead and say start. Here are the two. So the difference is the user profile is a per device ish um, sort of uh, security setting. So basically if you have just a handful of devices that you wanna set rules on, this might be a good way to go. Also, if setting time limit quotas, like I want the Xbox to only be online for an hour a day or two hours a day, then you are forced to use this option because that is not part of the network profile down here. So a lot of cases, this is gonna do it for you. Um, unless you want a kid's Wi-Fi network, 
that will block you know everything on that network and we'll talk about some of the pros of that here in just a minute so we're just going to go ahead and say user profile hit next we're going to name it this is just naming the profile so we know what it is so we can call this kids if i could type not kiss kids there we go we'll say next all right, so now it's saying, well, we wanna assign devices. So in order to kind of do this, and keep in mind, you can add devices after the fact too, but this is just, which devices do you wanna get in here out of the gate? So I'm gonna scroll down. I'm just gonna put my iPhone in there, but you can see how it says Tim's iPhone, and I know what that is. So we're gonna go ahead and add that, and we'll go ahead and create this security profile. Now, none of the rules are done yet. We're gonna do that next. This is just creating the, the container that they're gonna be saved in. So once it's there, we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, all right. And then this warning pops up. It says, to avoid the client devices bypassing the monitor, you need to enable this setting. Now remember, kids are smart. They're gonna look for ways to get around this. Do you wanna do it now? So we're gonna so go ahead and say yes, and it's right here. Do not allow client to use DOH servers, and we're gonna go ahead and say apply. So it's nice that it takes you right to that spot so you can do that. So we'll, once we've applied, you can see the changes were applied and we can go ahead and X out of this box. All right, so now we have our kids profile. It's asking us, what do we want to do with this profile? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and click in here and we're gonna choose edit. So I'm just clicking the little three line ellipse here, say edit, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and set up our rules. So you can set up an internet schedule. So if you only want the devices to be allowed, remember this is only devices that are included in this profile. So if you want them only to be allowed to get online at certain times of the day, you can actually set that here. Basically anything that's gray is blocked and anything that's white is allowed. So if you have concerns about maybe the kid getting up in the middle of the night, turning on the Xbox while everybody's sleeping, that happens quite a bit you can actually set it so that box cannot get online after, you know, 9 p.m., right? So I'm I'm basically, the way you do that is you check the ones you want, check the box you want to do, and you just kind of drag your thing around. If you want to set block times, you come over here, and each one of these little squares is in 15-minute increments. So you can basically say, whoops, I, I didn't mean it to start at 4. I want to start it at, you know, 8 p.m. The Xbox is, Xbox is off. So we'll go ahead and actually get those white. We'll go blocked. I want it to be starting at eight o'clock on the button. So I want it, and I want it to remain off until seven. So in this case where I have it right here is at eight o'clock. So it's military time, 20 <laughs> uh, is eight o'clock. So from eight to 7 a.m., the devices in this uh, uh canister this profile will not be allowed to get to the internet they're blocked so we can go ahead and say okay now one thing i want to point out here is when you're in here editing you can actually go set up all of these things before hitting okay i hit okay as i did it and you saw it took me back out so just just know that once you set this you can click over to the next tab and and continue your setup process and then hit okay at the end so now the time quota, this is really great. Now, not a lot of security devices have this built in. And I think it's because it's difficult to enforce. Um, there's a lot of things at play here. And so one of the devices I really like is the Firewalla, which I'll have some separate videos on that. But it's been asked to be added to that device and the people at Firewall said, well, we wanna add it, but it is a little tricky to do based on the technology and stuff. I don't know how it all works, but it is built into this, which I really like. So basically what this means is, is you can set it for a custom schedule that says each day, this box, you know, these devices can only get on for so much time per day. Once their time runs out, it shuts off. Whether So you could leave the availability open all day, every day, and then come in here to the time quota and say the Xbox can only be online for two hours a day and you can set a custom schedule, which is really nice. So this is Monday through Friday, or if you wanna leave weekends a little bit more free, you can do Sunday through Friday, you know, you can set your schedule and basically say on Sunday, you get three hours, uh, Monday, three hours, whatever. Friday, you can have four hours because it's, you know, after school, and then Saturday, it's wide open. You can be on the Xbox all day Saturday. We're leaving that off of our quota here. And so in my case with my iPhone, it's saying my iPhone can only be online for three hours and 30 minutes per day. Um, right here. So I could choose okay, but I'm going to go ahead and just 
go over to the next tab once I get this set the way I want. So we can turn on a web filter. And then um, this is a little warning that pops up that's turned on in the advanced settings. Um, so it's basically referring to iCloud specific devices, has a private relay that's been blocked. Um, it's recommending to have it turned on by default. So we'll go ahead and do that. And that's actually done right here in this advanced settings. You can see it's, it's in there. So when you turn on web filter, there are some pre-built ones, right? So child is probably a little bit more towards geared towards a younger child. And then, you know, there's an employee. And if you have a guest Wi-Fi network, you can also apply this to a guest Wi-Fi. So if you don't want your babysitter getting anything they're not supposed to, you can create a guest Wi-Fi network and apply these guest policies to it. Or you can choose custom. And I'm going to click on custom just so you can see what we're talking about here um, in this. So it's basically saying, what do you want your custom filter to be called? So we're going to call it kids, right? And the action is block. And we'll go ahead and say next. And then these are the categories that are pre-checked in those other ones. So you can actually go into the kids one and change it and maybe turn off things or turn on things. And to help you guys, I've actually put in the description of this video, um, a little definition of each of these things in case you don't know. I don't want to go over them all now like wars. You're like, what is war as, you know? So I will put a little description in the description of this video that describes each of these things to help you with this process. And But basically, let's say the X, you know, this device, we don't want to get to adults. Uh, we don't want hacking. Uh, we don't want our kids to see gambling. Uh, we want to restrict violence. But keep in mind, this is what the... Synology box deems as violence. So sometimes by turning things on, you can overdo it. Um, we don't want them to see dating things. I don't want social networks. Now let's talk about social networks just for a second here. Um, it's going to do the best it can to block anything categorized as a social network. So it does a pretty good job with Facebook. It does a pretty good job with, you know, um, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, things like that, it's gonna do a pretty good job of making those fairly unusable. Where it doesn't do a great job and additional steps will need to be taken, which we're gonna talk about later, is with Snapchat and with TikTok. I don't know if those are just not seen as social networks or they haven't updated their databases. It will hinder them a little bit, but it doesn't block all the content. They can still use Snapchat and TikTok. So in my house, we don't really like our younger children to be on Snapchat. Um, it's just a personal rule for ours. So by turning this on in our house, we have to do some additional steps to basically render the app <laughs> unusable. Um, so it does a pretty good it does a pretty good job. But this is one of the areas where I think it could be improved on. Um, it just it's not going to block everything. I wish that you could dive into the networks and say in social networks. They can be on Facebook and Instagram, but they can't be on this, this, and this. You know, I wish you could dive in a little deeper. And so that's an area where I feel it could use a little work. So we're going to go ahead and check these settings for our kids deal. And it does allow you to give extra examples to things to block. And this is where we would add some specific URLs to Snapchat or TikTok or whatever to try and help block the content on there. So... Just understand that you can add specific URLs, which we'll, we'll do later in this video. So we'll say apply. All right, so now we have this custom kids network in here. So you can see custom called kids. And you can add or subtract to this as you go. Um, I recommend, you know, once you set security options, you know, check to see how things are going. Can kids still do their homework and things like that? We don't want to block the, the stuff it doesn't need to block. And sometimes these types of systems, and I'm gonna lump them all in together, they're doing the best they can to identify this traffic as social or violence or gambling or whatever. They don't always get it right, but this does a pretty good job. So we'll go ahead and click Safe Search. Safe Search is basically a feature that allows, you know, if they go on YouTube, which let's face it, all kids are going on YouTube, um, it puts it in a safer mode so they're not going to get to any nasty videos. It's going to put Google, Bing, and DuckDuckGo also in a safe safe mode, which means if they Google boobs, they're not going to see a bunch of nudity coming back at them, which is nice too. You know, if you got boys, boys will be boys. They get curious, and so it just kind of keeps them out of, uh, from getting into those, you know, 
pictures and stuff that they're not supposed to be in a search engine and on YouTube. Um, and then there's our advanced feature. So once we get everything set the way we want it, right? We got our schedule, we got our time quota, everything done, we can go ahead and say, okay. Now my iPhone is, the clock starts ticking. So internet, and it tells you right here, this device, which I have one in here, if you add multiple, they all follow the same rules. Now keep in mind, you can create multiple kid profiles. Let's say you have younger kids and older kids. You could create a younger kids profile that has a lot more restrictions and just make sure they're not getting anywhere they're not supposed to. And maybe you have teenagers that you can be a little bit more lax and just, you know, different timelines and they can be on the internet more, um, things of that nature. So just understand that you can have multiple profiles here. We can, you don't have to just put all your eggs in one basket. But for this particular one we set, you can see my iPhone is going to turn off at 20 o'clock, which is 8 p.m. I have three hours and 30 minutes remaining of my quota, which is great, and I've made zero attempts. I can reward so I can add extra time and do certain things, or I can come in here and hit the pause all button, which shuts off internet for every device whenever I want, and you can do that from your cell phone as well, which is nice if you're on the go. Um, also, you don't have to be on the network. If you set up the routers for remote access and remote control, you can actually do this while you're at the grocery store, right? So um, there's a lot of things you can, um, this really does open up the door to give you a lot of control. Now, once we have our kids profile, there are some additional things we can set up up here. There's a web filter, which we just did. This is a quick, another way we can quickly get in and customize this so I can click on the kids one and hit edit, or I can add a new one, maybe the older kids, whatever. Um, you can do it right from here. Access request, we don't have any, but if your kid hits all their quota time, they do have the option to request more time. Uh, they will get a pop-up on their screen, they can request more time. A lot of them will probably do this. You'll get an email or a notification on your smartphone that says they've requested more time and you can allow or deny that. Um, and then you can customize, excuse me, you can customize the block page that they get. So for a lot of sites where they go to when they're not supposed to be there, they will either, it'll either just not go to the site and just kind of time out and give them kind of a, a blank screen, or they will get a screen that says, this website is not allowed, it has been blocked, you are not allowed to go here, and I'll put that up on the screen so you can kind of see what it looks like. So that is the user device profile. That is what goes into setting that up. And like I say, you can go kind of nuts with it if you got multiple age kids, which again, every household is a little different. All the rules are a little different. I know with my kids, we do allow them to, as they get older, to you know be on their devices a little bit more. And we just try and teach them about the dangers because eventually they're gonna be on their own and these restrictions aren't gonna be in place. And we just want them to understand the ins and outs of their decisions. All right, so the next type of profile we're gonna create and walk through here is the network profile. And so the network profile works a little bit different. Basically what you do is you create a kids network or a guest network, whatever it is, and any device connected to that network is gonna to have to follow the rules we set up here. And so as it pertains to what we're talking about here of protecting our little ones online, you would need to make sure that their devices were only connected to this network so you can enforce those rules. Now, one of the benefits of this is, is if their friends come over and connect to the Wi-Fi and connect to this network, their devices also will have to follow these rules, which is really, really nice. However, it does create a little area of difficulty that I wanna highlight and is that make sure your kids don't know the regular Wi-Fi password because if they know that, they can just move their device over to that and they don't have to follow any of the rules. So it would require you to kind of have the Wi-Fi password on the main network to be a secret um, so they don't know uh, and they can't just bypass the security here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now, in order to do this, we have to assign these rules to a network. So in order to do that, we have to start over in the network center. And actually we're gonna do it a different way. We're gonna go ahead and do it in the Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and go into Wi-Fi. We're going to create a Wi-Fi network. So we'll go into Wi-Fi settings and we're gonna choose create here under Wi-Fi network. Now we're gonna give it a name, kids. I'll do all caps and the password. All right, I'm just gonna choose a simple password one through nine. Um, don't do that. Now it does say on here in this paragraph here, when you create this network, it's going to create its own 
network, its own VLAN for this kid's Wi-Fi. So we're gonna go ahead and hit apply and let this do its thing. Okay, so now we have a Wi-Fi network called Kids, and you can see that it is turned on right there. So we can go ahead and close out of this, all right? And now we're gonna come set up our profile network and assign it to that Kids network. So we're gonna go ahead, click on Profile. We're gonna choose Start. This time we're gonna choose the Network Profile option and choose Next. And you can see we have this Network 3 called Kids that we just created. If you skip that first step, you'll only have the two that are built in, which is your primary network and the guest network. You won't be able to assign this to a network. You can't create it from here. You have to go over and create it either in the network center or the Wi-Fi connect like we just did. So we'll go ahead and say connect, create. And now it is going to attach this profile that we're gonna set rules in to our kids network. So we'll go ahead and say, okay. All right, so now you see we have our kids user profile that my cell phone is a part of, and then we have our kids network that is tied to the kids Wi-Fi, okay? So if I come down here to my Wi-Fi settings and choose look for other ones, you can see in all caps right here, kids. And so that is what this is going to be applied to. All right, so we're going to go in here and choose edit and start setting up our stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and you can set up an internet schedule. So again, very similar to the other one, you can turn on when this network will allow devices to get online and when it won't. Um, you can set up web filtering. So again, a lot of the same rules that we talked about earlier, where you do custom um, or a child's network or a guest network, um, that is all done right in here. So we could choose custom. And actually, we could just choose the one we already created because we created one called Kids. So we'll go ahead and choose that again. Um, if, you're, if you skip forward to this part of the video, guys, you might want to go back and watch the other one. I go into a lot more detail. But just know that as we look at these items in here um, and we define, whoops, I don't want to add this. I want to edit it. Let's see if I can get to the edit section. Uh, that's actually done in a different area. But we can, you can define what you want blocked and I'm putting definitions in the description of this YouTube video so uh, you don't have to go Google all this stuff later. But so we're gonna go ahead and assign our web filter that we created earlier called kids to this. Um, we can turn on safe search. So we'll make sure that you know YouTube is safe searching Google, Bing and DuckDuckGo and then there's the advanced settings here which just has that check. So we'll go ahead and say okay. So now any device connected to this network is gonna to have to follow those rules. Um, the web filter area here is where that, what is actually set in here is divine. So we set, if you recall, we set this for kids. So we can actually double click that and go in here and these are the categories we have set and what I have defined down below. Now, again, the system does as well, as good as it can. It's gonna to try to keep things, um, you know, keep your kids safe from certain things that is categorized as these areas. But just understand it could potentially block something that you didn't want to block as well. And so in the cases like that, you can have an allow list that will supersede some of these blocks. And basically, if it, maybe it was they were looking up something for a school project that had to do with gun violence or something like that, then you could add some certain websites and allow them to get in here. So, you know, security guys is really nice, but it is a double-edged sword. It's not always gonna do the what you think it's supposed to do. And so it's gonna do the best it can based off of certain criteria that it looks for. So just kind of understand that this is only a tool to help keep your kids safe online. It is not gonna do everything for you. You still need to kind of be involved and check this and look for things that's blocking, which we'll get into here uh, next. So we have these different things that you can go in here and profiles, but this network profile that we created right here um, is going to handle all of these things like this. Now, one thing I want to point out is it does not have the internet quota. So you cannot set up this type of um, security profile and only allow any device on these networks to operate for a certain amount of time, like so many hours a day. Um, that doesn't work on this type of um, profile. You have to do that in the user-defined pro profile that we did a minute ago. So notice that's not even included in this part. All right. So 
Now that you have your security profiles set, how do we go about maintaining them, looking at them, figuring out what it's blocking, what it's not blocking? We're gonna cover that next and I'll show you exactly where to go and look for certain things so um, you can actually see where these devices are surfing to. Okay, so to start this conversation about where to go to track your information, what's going on online, you're gonna remain inside the Safe Access app but we're gonna go up and we're gonna start with the overview tab. So the overview tab is gonna kind of give you the general thing of what's happening. You can see it's the next day today. So I wanted to have some data in here just so you could look at it. And it, it is a fairly interactive map. So you can see as I'm hovering over things, it's telling us what's going on. So um, you can see that from this, it's blocked quite a few social networks. It blocked at a blacklist snapchat.com website and then I pulled up an adult website just to show that it would how that would portray in here as well. So that is where you can quickly get a, a glance of what's going on, right? If you go down here into the activity tab, this is what's gonna give you the more detailed look about what's happening. So for my testing, I went ahead and added my laptop into the protected uh, profile and then was pulling up, you know, tiktok.com, Facebook, there's the nasty website I went to just to kind of generate some data, um, show that it wasn't getting to anything. And I, I believe I'm putting it up on the screen right now so you guys can kind of see what that looked like. Um, but this is where you could go and actually look at what's happening, time, which profile caught it, uh, the device that is, um, you know, causing the problem and where it went and that not. And those would be pages and pages and pages of stuff. I think you can also run reports on this. I haven't done reporting and I'm not gonna dive into it in this video, it's already getting long enough, but I think you can generate reports too. So if you needed to take a piece of paper and say, hey, see, this is what happened here. Um, one thing I will point out over here in the security tab, um, if you look on this main view, it says dangerous attempts. So the router, in addition to uh, the profile for your kids, can also look for attacks, malware, things like that. So it's saying that there hasn't been anything happening on my network, which is good. Um, but the way that's actually set up is in the security tab is checking this checkbox. And when you do that, it will actually ask, it'll actually say, hey, we need to update the threat database. Um, so would you like me to take you there now? And you say yes. And that actually is over in the control panel here. And I'll just take you there manually um, under system and then system database. So you wanna make sure that all these are checked to automatically update as well as they are up to date. And if they aren't up to date, instead of saying up to date, they'll give you a install updates button that you can click on, okay? Um, while we're in here, just real quick, this is where you would also go to connect your router to your Synology account to remote manage it. So we had talked about that, turning it on and being able to do that. That's all done right here. So you can actually create a free Synology account and then link your router to it, which gives you a lot of the remote capabilities um, type of thing. So these are just some of the additional settings. And this is where you go to actually update your router. So again, I don't want to get too off topic here, but I did wanted to let you know kind of where this stuff was. Um, this is where you, in here, is where you would set up your email for email notifications or uh, make sure your uh, push notifications are set, okay? Because um, if you want the system to alert you when one of the profiles is attacked, it can do that. And I'll show you that next, but this is where you'd actually go in and set up your notifications. You'd put the email you want it to go into here and, and put it in there. So really simple to set up, nothing we need to show you on here, but just know that, that will, that's where you do it at. So if we close out of here and we go into uh, settings, settings is where you would you know, set those settings to say, I wanna be notified by email or mobile when these things happen. Now, keep in mind websites blocked by web filter. If we go back over to overview, you can see there's a lot in here. So I don't know if you wanna be notified every time it blocks something, um, but at the end of the day, uh, you could be if you'd like. Um, so there's that. Uh, this one website's blocked for security reasons. I would say, you know, that's always a good thing to know about. And then these are just if your children notify you to um, request more time, or this will tell you that their, their time quota has reached 80% so that you can let them, give them the warning saying, hey guys, you're down to 20% quota for your day, things like that. So this is where you'd set up those type of deals to be able to manage your deal. And notice what it says, do you want to enable not email notifications? Do you want me to take you there now? If I say yes, it would open up that area in the control panel, which I'll also go ahead and say no. 
So that's where you kind of keep a, a view on things um, as well. So this is where you would kind of go to do that. Now, one other thing, actually, I get to that in the next part. So um, let's just go ahead and kind of keep things rolling here. Okay, so one of the things I think this needs some work on is how well it blocks mobile apps. So, you know, when you your kids go on to TikTok or Facebook, unless you block the app and don't allow them to have it on their phone, that's generally how they're going to access that content. And so this doesn't do the best job of blocking mobile apps. Um, and it just, it's they seem to work. So to me, extra steps need to be taken. And I'm just gonna show you a couple things that you can do that will help in this area, but it might take a little bit of trial and error or trial and error to, to get them all in there and, and block things the way you want. So it's, it's a little bit harder to block the mobile apps, um, in my opinion. You know, Facebook was, you know, I could scroll through Facebook, but it was all the screens for the tiles that I would read were grayed out, you know, things like that. So it was blocking some stuff. It just wasn't truly blocking uh, the app from working. So one thing that you can do to be able to add uh, additional uh, security in here to block apps would be to go over into your web filter area and find the custom web filter that we had that you created, and then there's a block list. And so what I would typically do, like this is ones I've added in here for TikTok. And, and basically what it did with TikTok was is it let me navigate TikTok, but eventually I couldn't swipe up anymore. It just, it quit working after a while. So it, it rendered the app, so it really just didn't work well. And, and so there was very limited things that I could do on it. And so if TikTok is a, is a hot topic for you, you can add these URLs and I'll put these in the description so you have them. Um, now, Snapchat's another big one, at least for me anyway. So, you know, here's an example of just going out to Google and saying, hey, I wanna block Snapchat. And then you could go in and add these one at a time in the URL block list. So for example, I would, you know, copy this one, control C, I come over here into my block list, put it in here, okay, and hit add. And you do that one at a time, so it's a little bit time consuming. Obviously, these sites use a lot of different URLs to make their apps work. But if you start adding in the adding these in in your block list, you know any device that's protected by that kid URL, the apps start to work badly. So they don't they don't necessarily all out block it where the app just won't open or doesn't work, but they will start blocking content, make it so the messaging doesn't work. You know, it kind of renders it so it's fairly useless, uh, but it might take a little bit of trial and error on your part to get those in there. Make sure you get all the URLs added. It's something I would highly recommend if this is important to you to, you know, circle back. You know, okay, Snapchat added some additional URLs or TikTok did. So it's just one of those things where if you can block them from putting the app on the phone itself, using bark or just parental controls that's probably better but it is going to stop things from anything going from you know facebook.com snapchat snapchat.com and so on and so forth which is really really nice now if you did want to say i don't care if they use that but i want or i want those blocked but i do want to allow um you know linkedin for example or something you could create a, an allow list to kind of allow that as well so that's another thing we didn't really talk about too deep um just because the video is already starting to get long so um hopefully this helps guys and i'm going to go ahead and share my final thoughts so the question remains what do i think about this um yeah i think it does i i really do think this is a good product I, the fact that it's free and it can block adult content it's really going to work well for your little kids um, just making sure they don't actually click on something and, you know, you know, do something they're not supposed to. When you get up into the teenager realm, it becomes a little bit trickier. And I'm finding that out with my own too, right? We're giving them a little bit more freedom. We're more focusing on the education of what's right and what's wrong instead of just out blocking it. Um, so, you know, it's going to struggle with some of the mobile apps like we mentioned. And so, um, I, I think in general, unless your blocking device has some kind of application blocking built into it, which is another layer of security, um, you know, they're all going to kind of struggle with this to some extent. But I do think from a parenting standpoint, especially if you have littles, this is going to do a really good job. So I hope you guys found this useful. Again, at least getting in there, you might have to play with it a little bit. You might have to tweak some settings or go out to Google and say, hey, Give me a list of URLs that I need to block if I want the mobile app to be rendered useless and, and then kind of apply those and see how it goes. But all in all, 
if you're looking for a way to just make your network more safe and be able to cover a large home or small home or whatever, guys, look to Synology. I think it is a decent option um, and is going to do a good job for you. So I hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys in a later video.